Hello and welcome to the Scatterbolt channel and today I want to show you what I think are the best B450 motherboards to go for in the year 2020. So I polled you guys recently on my YouTube community post and yes I did see the overwhelming majority of you wanted to see what are the best budget graphics cards and I will be making that video soon but I need something for this weekend and I saw the second most voted one was the B451 as confirmed also by my Twitter because I kind of held a little tiebreaker poll there. So here I've actually got quite an experience of B450 motherboards on me and I'm excited to tell you which ones I think are going to be the best value. Maybe which ones are going to be best if you are in a certain scenario here or a certain scenario there, which ones are the best and which ones to avoid. However, for the most part, every single one of these motherboards are B450 motherboards, which means they're going to do the exact same thing, which is control the stuff in your computer. It's not like if you go with an MSI motherboard, you're going to have a radically different experience than say like an ASRock motherboard. It doesn't work like that. Regardless, all of these motherboards will serve the same purpose. So even like the small minute differences that you think may play a huge role in like really dictating what your PC experience is gonna be like, in essence, are really minute. So don't worry about it. All these motherboards are gonna say the same purpose, but across my time with them, I have noticed a few small differences here and there that have made me like a few over the other. So if you wanna see more content like this coming up on the Scatterable channel, especially in the budget or entry level realm, then do consider subscribing to the Scatterable channel because I do have a review coming up on May 7th covering the brand new Ryzen 3100 and 3300X, and I will be benchmarking those chips on one of these B450 motherboards. So interesting and exciting times. So if you don't wanna miss that, hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification button because that will be going live May 7th. And now, back to what we have here. Now, quick disclaimer, there are some other boards that I will be recommending that aren't physically on this desk because I either reused the box for something else or sold off the PC that had the motherboard in it. So yes, I will be mentioning some other boards I don't have here physically, but I have had experience with them in the past and or have already done some research on them. So my favorite value oriented B450 motherboard you can buy right now are the ASRock B450M Pro 4 and Pro 4F. And if you're wondering, I think the only difference between the Pro 4F and Pro 4 is just the color. So from that, I've seen the specifications and they're basically identical. But anyways, why I really like these motherboards is that right now you can find them for about $71 to $74 and they offer a lot of really cool things. For one, in the VRM tier list for B450 motherboards, they have kind of like the mid-range VRM spec that's in the lower part, which is already better than a lot of entry-level B450 motherboards, which means this would be a great motherboard if you wanted to do some amateur overclocking on, say, your budget Ryzen processor. And just in general, those better VRMs are going to give you a better lifespan with this motherboard. So if you want something that's budget and you're going to keep in your system for a long time, I'd say I'd go with these. Also, you've got two 12-volt RGB headers, one 5-volt RGB header, two CPU fan headers, and three fan headers, which all those things are really enticing to see in this cheap of a motherboard. And really the only con I can think of is that the main PCI Express X16 slot isn't steel reinforced. So there could be graphics card slagging, but that's only an issue if you're gonna place in like a really high-end graphics card into this motherboard, like a GTX 1080 or RTX 2080, which if you're looking to a motherboard of uh, this budget, you probably shouldn't even be buying a card like that in the first place. Next on the board, I do wanna talk about the MSI Gaming Plus and MSI Tomahawk Max. Now I don't have the Tomahawk Max on me, but I have experience with the original Tomahawk and more or less, that's basically the best B450 motherboard you can buy out there because it has one of the highest quality VRMs, especially for a B450 motherboard. So it's great for any sort of overclocking, I'd say up to, or maybe even past an entry level X470 motherboard. So it's a really awesome option if you're going with a higher end system that's like a thousand dollars plus. Like if you're gonna be sticking in a 3600X or 3700X, you wanna overclock later down the road, but still have some high quality VRMs to work with. And really the only con with that motherboard is the price because it is $115. And if you wanted to spend less money, this motherboard that I have right here, the MSI B450 Gaming Plus offers nearly the same features. It might not have as high quality of VRMs, still really good compared to other B450 motherboards, but it's 10 bucks cheaper. And in my opinion, it looks a little prettier. But from looking at the spec sheet, it has nearly the same specs. Still, still has four CPU fan headers, 
and some 12 volt RGB headers you can work with, but for the most part, it's I think it's up there with the MSI Tomahawk in terms of overclockability, but it's $10 less, which is why I really like this if you're willing to spend $105 on a high quality B450 motherboard. Now these other two motherboards I'm going to recommend are kind of situational. I still think they're good, but the previous three or four motherboards I just mentioned I think are a better value or just better in general if you want a longer lasting PC that you can maybe overclock with, but these are situational. So if you aren't gonna be overclocking, but you still want a whole like suite of things you can tinker around with on your motherboard, as well as having something that you might upgrade later on, so maybe it's like a placeholder board, I look at the Gigabyte B50 AORS M, and this kind of applies to the whole AORS lineup because a lot of them fit in the same tier because all of them use the same VRMs. So while this is a nice looking motherboard, it's VRM does kind of slot itself in the lower end. So while it can overclock, it can't overclock as well as the ASRock or MSI boards that I just mentioned. And if you want to keep this motherboard for a really long time, you might need to replace it like after four or five years, which still, I mean, is a really long time. But if you are going to be doing any sort of overclocking or overvolting on your CPU, I think this motherboard is still going to be excellent. So not only is it $85, but you're also getting two 5 volt RGB headers, which is going to be awesome for you RGB junkies who want to hook up a bunch of RGB fans and RGB strips. And if that wasn't enough, you're also given a 12 volt RGB port. So that's another port you can mess around with. And finally, one of the bigger things is that I think this is one of the only B450 motherboards that come with a built-in M.2 shield. So if you are gonna pick out this motherboard for a future build, go ahead, spend the extra money and get an M.2 SSD because that included heat shield. It's gonna be so nice to prolong the lifespan of your M.2 SSD. And really the only con is, besides the slightly lower quality VRMs, is that there's only two fan headers on the motherboard. So you have one on the left side and one on the right side. So if you wanted to place more than two channel fans in the system, you're gonna need a fan controller, which could come in like a pack of three if you buy one of those like fan packs, but it's just something to keep in mind. But regardless, I still think it's an excellent $85 B450 motherboard. And then this guy, the ASRock B450M Steel Legend, or if you wanna throw it in the mix, the regular ATX B450 Steel Legend. Now, the only reason why I'm choosing this motherboard is that if you also don't care about overclocking and you just want a really pretty looking motherboard, you definitely want the B450M Steel Legend because it is $85. And I believe the ATX variant is $115, but that's a ripoff. Don't get the ATX, just stick with the micro ATX. But again, those VRMs are not the best, especially when compared to the Pro 4 and Pro 4F. And you're also getting two CPU fan headers. So say if like you used an AIO cooler, you could use a pump and the fans with it and not have to use like a double connector. You can just hook up both to this motherboard, which is really cool to see in this price point. But really the only downside is that the VRMs are not as good as they should be, especially when a motherboard looks this good for 85 bucks. So that's my only downside. But again, if you don't care about overclocking and you're eventually gonna upgrade your system like four to five years from now at most, then I think this is still an excellent motherboard choice if you can find it for $85. Now I wanna talk about some average B450 motherboards, which really, to put this into perspective, these aren't necessarily bad whatsoever. I just think they're overpriced or overvalued. And really, I think you can get better deals like what I just covered, but these, I mean, will still do basically the same job as those, but I just think they're a little overpriced or don't have as much firepower or features as some of those other boards. So the motherboard I actually want to start off this tier with isn't actually on this desk, but it's very similar to the Pro 4F from ASRock. It is the ASRock Fatality Gaming K4. So this is a $100 B450 motherboard that basically has the same specs as the Pro 4F, but it's $25 more. That's the only thing. Now it is ATX, so I think for an ATX board it actually has some good value, but if you if you're really flexible with your PC and like it's an ATX or micro ATX case, I'd go with the Pro 4F if you can't help it. I mean, there is that little RGB light that's on the bottom right of the motherboard that could look kind of cool, but I mean, I just think there's better boards you can buy for that money, like the B450M Plus from Asus. So this right here is $90, and like I said, it's not necessarily bad, it's just the only thing holding this board back are the low quality VRMs. So kind of similar to the B450 Steel Legend, this motherboard could be really awesome because it looks really great, but its VRMs are average. 
So you could get some decent overclocks, nothing like too crazy to really like squeeze out the value out of a budget gaming PC. But I mean, for a $90 motherboard, I would have expected be better VRMs, especially when compared to the Pro 4F. But aside from that though, this still is gonna offer a whole suite of features that you'd expect out of a semi-high-end B450 motherboard, like a lot of channel fans to work with, five volt RGB headers, 12 volt RGB headers, and all that good stuff, as well as a reinforced PCI Express slot cover. And now this next motherboard, I would say is the cheapest you should go for a B450 motherboard. You shouldn't go any cheaper than this, because I think this still provides like the bare minimum without sacrificing too much for the price. So this is the Gigabyte B450M DS3H, and this one's all right. I mean, if you're building a super budget system and you're okay with having a little few inconveniences here and there with buying a super cheap motherboard, I say this one is definitely passable. And really my only two major cons with it is that there's only one channel fan header, which is gonna be bad. So if you wanna hook up more than one fan in your PC, you are probably gonna need a fan header, which means you're gonna have to place it on like the back side of your PC near the right side, because on the other side and the left side is gonna be that single channel fan header. So it's just gonna be an inconvenience, especially you have one of those cases that already has a case fan on the left side of the case, and you would just normally just hook it up right to that channel fan header that's dedicated to that spot. But since there's only one, you gotta kinda like do some weird things if you wanna hook up more fans, like use a fan header on the back side of the case and just hook everything up on that side. So that's the only major inconvenience that, that, that I see with a motherboard like this, but anyways, the final motherboard I do wanna finish out this tier list with are the majority of B450 Strix and ROG motherboards from Asus. Now again, they aren't bad, they really aren't, but I just think they're overpriced and the VRMs you're getting are not as good as some of the other competitors on here, especially compared to ASRock and MSI. So according to the B450 VRM tier list from that website I've been showing you a bunch of throughout this video, Besides the B450 Strix i, which is an ITX motherboard, a lot of the VRMs on the Strix series motherboards aren't as good as what you're actually paying for, which, I mean, isn't a problem if you're not gonna be overclocking, like I've said a bunch of times already in this video, but if you want the most value and most possible performance, if you say were to overclock or throw in a high-end CPU, like a Ryzen 7 series processor, you could be holed back a little bit by these motherboards and may need some more airflow to compensate for those lower end VRMs. So just a little word of warning, if you're gonna go with one of those motherboards, unless it's the B450i Strix ITX motherboard. And let's finish off this video with motherboards I would not recommend at all. So this is kind of like a little just minimized version of the motherboards I'll just say not to get. But more or less, don't get any entry-level ASUS motherboards or really cheap MSI or ASRock motherboards. Now, the reason why I say this is because the VRMs on those motherboards are very bad. Like, I mean, they're only designed for like a 3200G or a really low-end Ryzen 3 processor, and that would just be adequate without having to shove a bunch of fans to the case to keep the actual motherboard cool, because there's no actual like heat sink dissipation on those VRMs. So I just stay away from those motherboards. And I mean, besides that, if I were to actually choose one in this Garbo tier of motherboards, I'd personally stick it to Asus because at least those have like, you know, fan headers and small conveniences here and there. But the VRMs are just not good at all, especially for a budget gaming PC if you're already gonna be struggling to like fit in case fans to get that airflow through the case. So I just stay away from those motherboards like the Asus Prime K, the Asus Prime A, the ASRock B450M HDV R4.0 or the MSI Pro M2. The VRMs are just not good. They're really just drawn back in terms of features and conveniences on the motherboard themselves. And of course, none of those VRMs have had any actual heat sinks on them. So I just stay away from them and stick to the better tiers that I've listed so far on this video. So that right there is my roundup of B450 motherboards I recommend in the year 2020. And even with B550 motherboards on the horizon, I still think there's a place for these because as we've seen, AMD is still producing second gen Ryzen chips like the 1600 AF and 1200 AF. So I think there's still gonna be a market for these motherboards, especially if B550 is gonna be more expensive than we anticipate. And also that isn't a discount the used market or the resale market where you can find all these B450 motherboards that could eventually hit like on Mercari or eBay or Craigslist 
for really good prices. So I think there still needs to be some sort of guide for what B450 motherboards even want to look at or maybe not look at. So I think I did an okay job covering that in today's video. So if you enjoyed this video, then do consider subscribing to the Skyrim channel because I went ahead and made like a huge list of all these motherboards, listed out all their individual features and little things here and there that I liked about them. So if you like that hard work that I put into this video, then do hit that like button. I've also got other social medias like Discord, Instagram, and Twitter that you can totally follow, which those will be in the description. And there you can check out more things like my upcoming progress on my Ryzen 3100 and 3300X review coming out on May 7th. Put that date down. Anyways, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Skywall Channel, signing out.